There is one thing that gets me and my friends together regularly. It's not book readings. It's not anything else in our, our lives. We want to get together, but it just doesn't happen. Except when we're playing this. This right here is Dungeons and Dragons. And it's a thing that I love. And I love it not just because of its rules, not because of the fantasy, not because of any of that stuff, but because it is a a friend maker and a friend keeper. It is how I is one of the ways in which I connect with people. Not the only way, I will admit. And it does this with this very um, interesting structure. It's not as simple as a board game, but it's not as complex as an MMO. It's right there in the middle ground where if you don't want to get into too much detail, you don't have to. But if you want to learn every aspect of the game, there's so much to learn. And also importantly, it's a game of imagination. It's a game of storytelling. It's an experience where you and your friends are figuring out how these characters live their lives and get done what needs to get done with dice rules and dice rolls, rather, that tell you what happened to an extent. It's collaborative, but it's not completely freewheeling. Um, there's a lot of attempts at collaboration, which kind of assumes that everyone's good at telling a story and that everyone's equally capable uh, of following social cues and more importantly that everyone is of equal status with everyone else and that's rarely the case uh, it's actually really hard to tell a story with somebody else because you come from different perspectives and there's just a lot of things going into it D&D provides a framework with this idea of a game and a, the idea of a game master somebody who is um, coming up with a scenario to which the players bring characters and we see how the characters deal with that scenario and what they do. This is the magic of D&D &D, that it's this, <clears throat> this merging of the dungeon masters, the game masters initial concept and how it, it is practically approached by the players and what they do when they see this scenario. And because of how D&D &D structures its rules, because of what it uh, says you can or can't do, there are clear rules for certain um, clear situations where it is helpful to have a quick die roll to determine if you find a secret or not, or if you are able to escape from a trap or are instead caught by it. But there are lots of other situations where you're not rolling dice all the time. You're just figuring it out. You're just deciding in the moment, well, this is what's most interesting. And this is the weird thing. I have not described a single thing about the mechanics of the game. D&D &D is an experience. Um, it's not just a set of rules. And the rules have changed. I mean, we can go all the way back to... You know, the very early D&D, &D, the zeroth edition, up to first edition, um, you know, the old uh, basic rules, up through second edition, you know, uh, back in the day, all that stuff, going all the way to, uh, moving to third edition, where everything got nice and, uh, and clean and easy to, to follow, and it was a, a systematically designed game, more or less for the first time. And then we got move on to fourth edition, where things got really tactical and uh, you could really dig into all your different tactical options, now down to 5th edition, where, you know, um, uh, the game has reached a, a nice middle ground where there, there are options, but you're not overwhelmed by them. Um, and, but meanwhile, everything seems and is uh, organized and, and structured in a way where you, you understand where you are in the rules and in the, the structure of what you're supposed to do. 
and this is the thing, is that D&D, I could describe how the, the, the dice work, I could describe how to create a character, but that's not really important. What's important is that D&D lets me and my friends play heroic stories, tell heroic stories, and build these experiences with each other, and laugh, and chat, and spend hours with each other, with these characters, with this world. And that's another important thing. I think a lot of people think that D&D is this uh, intense experience where you're imagining yourself in this other world and where you're spending hours and hours um, you know, imagining yourself teleported to this other environment. That's not the case. Um, some groups are like that, but most of the time, you know, there's a lot of Monty Python jokes. And there's a lot of references to Stranger Things and um, you know, uh, people mentioning what's happening with... Uh, with their dog and all that kind of stuff. It's a casual experience much of the time. And sometimes, it, and that allows for times that are more intense, that are more about a particular character's moment. But it doesn't have to be this uh, acting, acting, right? It's not that all the time, or even most of the time. It's a way to have fun together. And most importantly, and really most, most importantly, you're having fun together in a way that allows all of you to grow closer together as people. These roles, DM and player, players with other characters, provide these very specific um, a very specific framework for letting you have some spotlight time and think through consequences of actions and also see how other people are behaving with their characters and possibly help them. D&D brings me closer to other people. It strengthens my bonds with my friends much better than any other thing in my life because it's not competitive. Right? You're not sitting down to a video game where you're all trying to shoot each other. Or a board game where one of you is trying to win. You know, um, or a, a book club where there's an aspect of everyone kind of wants to score points and, and be the one to, tell the really, to say the really smart thing. Right? It's much more truly collaborative. Um... And it's, it's why it's an important part of my life. It's something that I do frequently. Because it, it makes me better at being with people. And it's one of the most, most important skills you can learn. Um, and I love my friends. And this allows me to keep with my friends. To keep those connections close. Um, also, I just got to say, you know, D&D uh, &D mechanically... Uh, so let's not make this a, an entirely um, uh, high-level thing. d d mechanically does an extremely good job of um, providing you with just enough to let you play. I played a lot of role-playing games uh, besides just D&D, &D, and I really love how particularly uh, the current edition, 5th edition, um, again, finds that sweet spot where there's some dice rolling, there are rules, there's structure. There's a lot to a character sheet in 5th edition, but it's not overwhelming the way it was in some earlier editions. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm very impressed by how they've designed this edition of the game. Um, and there's a lot of material out there for it. One of the other nice things about 5th edition is that it's more or less backwards compatible, um, with previous editions, or more accurately, it is more backwards compatible with previous editions than most previous editions were backwards compatible with editions prior to those, right? So they, they try to make backwards compatibility, um, as easy as possible, even though it's not going to be, you know... Straight one to one, which means there's decades worth of material out there that you can go grab. Old dungeons, palaces, swamps, tombs that you can dive into and make use of. What's also nice about D and D versus other role playing games is that there's a lot of support for it. So there are online communities where you can play D and D with other people. We can find other D and D groups, either your local physical you know, meetup groups or online groups. 
Um, D&D is one of those games that definitely works best face-to-face. Um, but if you have to do online, you know, via voice chat or video chat, that works. It's just going to be like you know, 80% is good. Um, so, you know, certainly if that's your only option, you know, definitely pursue that. Uh, but you can also find face-to-face groups, make new friends. Um, and tabletop gaming and particularly role-playing seems to be one of those communities that has a lower ratio of, of a-holes than a lot of other communities that I've come across and, and worked with. So you're, you're much less likely to find somebody who's going to be a, a problem. Uh, obviously they exist, but it's a nice thing. So, yeah, um, D&D's cool. D&D's really fun. If you get a chance, if there's a, a way of doing it, um, do it. I'm going to be starting a D&D group with uh, some of my followers here on the channel. So if you're interested in playing D&D, um, hop on my Discord. I'll have a link somewhere. And um, I will be recruiting players for D&D game. If you ever wanted to, to be involved, um, I'll, I'll be happy to... Uh, to bring you along and at least play one shot, you know, show you how it works, and uh, really just you know introduce. I want to introduce as many folks as possible to this is one of my favorite pastimes. Uh, Matt Colville calls it the most fun you can have with your brain, and I certainly agree with that. So, so apologies for this sort of rambling video. I hope this has been uh, helpful and useful to you. Uh, if you want more information, um, I'll try to pay attention to the comments on this video and answer specific questions. Obviously, there's a lot of material out, out there online. Uh, and if, you, if you'd like, I can certainly make more videos about this topic. So thank you all for watching. And um, if you get a chance to play D&D, play. <laughs>